time of where we open up God's Word and we read it. And I pray that this morning that it will soak into each of our hearts and bless us. And I do want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers that are here. It is a special day, and I'm glad that we have it. A day set, have a day set aside for uh, our mothers. And maybe too often we just really stop and reflect on our mothers on Mother's Day. I don't know. I trust we don't. But um, it is a day when we generally do think about mothers and talk about them. So uh, I do want to bring um, scripture this morning to us that do talk about mothers. And hopefully it'll be a time of blessing and encouraging uh, the mothers among us. Not only our mothers, the mothers among us, but all of us really, I think these scriptures do apply because you know what? Husbands and children really affect how our mothers are doing in life. You know, how are they, are they, um, you know, living life joyfully because our response to them does affect their joy. And so it's important for all of us, and I think these scriptures will bring out that. So happy Mother's Day. I hope that you mothers have come today looking at today as an opportunity for, for growth rather than coming and just... It's just another day. It's just, I'm kind of in living in a suppressed state. I hope it's not that way, but I hope that you're coming with seeing today as an opportunity. Because today is an opportunity. Each day is an opportunity to grow. And that has been impressed upon me this past week. Um, this past week was probably, it was a very unusual week for me. And... Probably a little more difficult for me than a typical week of hard work. <laughs> so I'm saying it's probably was harder work this week than what a normal week of hard work normally is. I had the opportunity to go to, to Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania to uh, sit I'm, as part of a board, a missions board, and every quarter it takes two full days of sitting in meetings to work through all the issues that the board is needing to face or is facing and deciding it. It's a little stretch for me because they start usually around eight in the morning and end at nine o'clock at night. So it's a lot of sitting, a lot of so many things that just get bombarded at you. And a lot of decisions, whole whole list of decisions. And in the meetings this week, there were quite a few instances, this is a missions board, and there's quite a few instances where some of the missionaries around the world that are under this board are and have or either have or, or are facing um, some struggles maybe with other members of their teams, and there can be, you know, really some relational clashes and that kind of thing. But you know what came out? It wasn't that discouraging to me. It actually caused me to think of opportunity. You know what? We still have opportunity here as a church to love each other, to encourage each other, to bless each other. And that, it's, it's kind of a, maybe I'm, maybe I don't know if that brings out my character or what, but it, you know, looking at the positive side of what's in front of us. So we have opportunity to love one another Amen. and to encourage one another. And then we had a, there in that same community, there was a brother who actually, he, he died the week before and the funeral was this past week. And it's a brother that I served on a board with for six years. And so knew him, got to learn, learn to know him quite well. But he died from a brain tumor. And so his funeral was this past week. And so I had the 
privilege and opportunity of being there at the visitation for him. And in that, the, at that visitation, it really rang true to me that I still have opportunity. I'm still walking <laughs> and talking. And I have the opportunity to, to love. I have the opportunity to encourage. I have the opportunity to love my wife, to live with her, to bless her and my children and my fellow brethren and sisters. So I kind of came away from all of that with thanking God that I still have opportunity. So I trust that you mothers are here seeing life as an opportunity today. So happy Mother's Day. May God bless you and encourage you today. James Sprunt said, Some mothers love their children selfishly. Their children exist for them. Other mothers love their children slavishly. They exist for their children. But some mothers love their children sacrificially. Their children and they exist for God. I think that's a good thing for mothers to keep in mind. In the heat of the day, when her husband is acting up, <laughs> what is she living for in the heat of the moment when her child is, you know, maybe young children, they mess their diaper and she has a hundred other things to do. In the heat of the moment when their uh, school child is needing help and there's all other sorts of housework that needs to be done, or their teenager is talking back to her and not going well. What are you living for? And I know it can be very difficult for mothers and all of the responsibilities they have. And sometimes we forget that. And we forget to actually encourage them in their walk with God and bless them. But it is a question, what to you mothers, as you go throughout the day in the, in the heat of each moment that arises, to keep in focus, what are you existing for? It is for God that you exist. It's for His glory. Author unknown, and this reminded me of a little story. So a number of years ago, we had a brother that was attending our church whose name was Arthur. And um, <clears throat> so one day we were on the we were traveling on the road, and um, you're gonna have to help me with this story, Sharon. I'm forgetting exact words, but Riley here, she was quite a bit younger, and um, help me out here. I'm, I should have. Yeah, she she asked, "Do you mean we were talking about Arthur?" That's right, and she said, "Do you mean like Arthur Unknown?" <laughs> and so that's what reminded me. She thought we were referring to something, you know, the, the name given after a poem or somewhere says author unknown. Not author, not Arthur, but author. The way to explain to her. So he wrote this, Mother's Love. Her love is like an island in life's ocean, vast and wide, a peaceful, quiet shelter from the wind and rain and tide. Tis bound on the north by hope, by patience on the west, by tender counsel on the south and on the east by rest. Above it like a beacon light shine faith and truth and prayer. And through the changing scenes of life, I find a haven there. So I was reflecting on my mother. And I don't think, and it's been quite a number of years you know, since I left home. Let's see, I was 20 and I'm now somewhere around the... 48 mark, right? 47. No, 47. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, 28 years. And, but, you know, I don't, I don't recall dreading or wishing my mother to just leave me alone. You know, rather, I felt welcome and um, very, it was a good thing to interact with my mother. At the time, I probably didn't consider all these things that this poem is describing. But I can look back and say, yes, they were there. And they were very much a part of her life. And so it blesses me to know and to remember and to think, you know, that my mother 
She was a woman who was, had faith, who lived by faith, truth, and prayer. And it blesses me today to know that she is praying uh, for me regularly. She says, she tells me that. And that really blesses me as her son to know that she, was, that she is that kind of a woman. Stan Miller, being a mother is not only about how you treat your children, but about how you treat everyone and everything around you. How you treat your husband, your children, your house, your cooking, your money, your friends, your church, and everything God has given you becomes part, and it says part, not all, of the way that your children see and treat everyone and everything around them. So mothers, you have a huge impact on the world around you. Um, I've heard comments made, you know, that what would this world be without mothers who influence their children as they're growing to do right, to live right, to love God? What would this world be like if we didn't have that? It'd be devastating. But it does affect those around you how you are living your life. You can turn to Proverbs 31. In relation to Mother's Day, I don't know if you thought of this passage or not, but my mind went to this passage because it talks about mothers here and how they care for their family. I want to read Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planteth the vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth her out, out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. I want to just consider this passage a little here. And I want to give opportunity after a few comments here for you children and husbands and whoever it is to just open it up and just make a little comment about something you see your mother doing and praise her for it and bless her for it. So I want some interaction in a little bit here, so be thinking about that. Something your mother does for you or for your siblings or for some other person, maybe a neighbor, and just bless and praise her for that. So she's valuable. 
what it says her says here. She's very valuable. It even says it's her price is far above rubies. So maybe we could think of it in this way that today we have money, right? We have cash, we have coins, we you know, that's you know, if we have money then we think we have something of value. But this scripture is saying her price, a virtuous woman, and that's your mother doing, you know, all these things that it's describing here, just who she is, you know, who God created her to be, her character, her personality, um, that it is more valuable than if you had a stack of, let's say, this high of $100 bills. Now, um, Lucas, you would, would you enjoy a stack of $100 bills about that tall? Would you like that? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's see. Adley, would you? Think, what would you do with a stack of $100 bills about 8 or 10 inches tall? Would that seem like you had a lot of money? Yeah. Yeah. Caleb, you think that'd be a lot of money? You'd probably take it pretty quick, wouldn't you? If I had a stack of $100 bills 8 or 10 inches tall, whoo, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. I, you know what, even if we husbands... What would I do with a stack of $100 bills, 8 or 10 inches tall? Hmm. Well, years ago, I had the opportunity to go to, to the U.S. Mint where they make money. Okay. Now, we could only go through a walkway up top and we could look down in and these machines were sp spitting out this money. And there were literally stacks of money. I don't remember, two by two and stack. They were in sheets. And that tall, well, you know, they'd say they're $20 bills or $100 bills, and it literally had to be, I don't know, millions of dollars, I guess. But a virtuous woman is more valuable than all of that. All of that. You know what? I wouldn't trade all the money in the world for my virtuous wife. I just wouldn't. All the land in the world, I wouldn't trade anything. Nothing. She's a virtuous woman. And I am so grateful for that. It's, it's valuable. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. There is no fear. Safely trust. It's a safe place to be with this virtuous woman. And he can trust in her in a variety of ways. He can trust, if he has that stack of $100 bills, he can trust that he can give it to her and it will be spent wisely, efficiently. It won't just disappear, okay? <laughs> and he can have the confidence that all that he has is hers, and it's good to go. No problem. He can trust in her in that way. She will produce with it. She will handle it well. She won't squander it. She won't just blow it. Now, we had a neighbor some years ago who they were struggling in their marriage and they just couldn't seem to make things work. And so I began to speak with him, try to just hear him and so forth. And the biggest thing was that he couldn't trust his wife with money. That was the number one issue. And, you know, I think he made a pretty good living. He made a lot of money. And so I don't know that it was that they were really struggling with money. It was just that to him it seemed like she was not spending the money wisely and wasting it. And that was a problem for their marriage. And so, this scripture, I think, is saying when, it's, when the husband can safely trust in her, that that's part of it. He doesn't have to worry how she's going to save or to spend the, the money. She's going to spend it wisely. She's going to do with things with it that, that produce and... Or maybe use it for things that are for good reasons. And he doesn't have to worry about those things. That's a virtuous woman. 
He can also go to her. And he can safely go to her with his problems. He can safely go to her with the things he's struggling with. That's a virtuous woman. He knows that she will have words of wisdom, have a heart of love, um, you know, maybe help him through issues that he otherwise wouldn't have anybody to help him with. He can trust that she will uh, respond to him in good and healthy ways. She's not afraid. She's bold. She buys a piece of land. She maybe sells it again and makes a profit. She goes out and buys cloth and clothes and these different things, and he doesn't have to be concerned about how she does these things. Now, verse 23, her husband is known in the gates. And I can imagine that one of the reasons he's known in the gates is because of his virtuous wife. I, I think that's probably a legit reason he is known. And then if you look at verse 31, it says, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now, I'm not sure if there's some relation here or not, but I see a husband who sits at the gate, the city, and is well known, But what's he known for? I think it's connected with who his wife is. And he is praising her there in the gate. And so we husbands, you know what? We have um, the opportunity to bless our wives in that way. I have heard quite a number of husbands make comments about their wives. Hmm. Doesn't seem real good. I've also heard of a lot of husbands who have said good things about their wives, building them up. And I would rather hear that. <laughs> but we have the opportunity to say and, and, you know, good things about our wives and build them up and bless them in the gates. Wherever we go, we can say good things about them and bless them in that way. In verse 20. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Taylor, when is the last time you called your mother blessed? I'm not asking you to answer. (laughs) Avery, how about you? Her children rise up and call her blessed. Casey, how about you? You ever blessed your mother? You don't have to answer me. I'm just just (laughs) talking with you. Um, It's a a question. You know, all of us are children. (laughs) You know, it's just the way it works. We're all children. So we have the opportunity to rise up and call our mother blessed for what she is doing. And I suppose that if a mother hears a child blessing her, that I suppose her heart would probably just kind of burst. Yeah, wow. You know that. Thank you. Thank you for your blessing. So I want to challenge each one of you, Adam. All the little children, grown children, to bless your mothers because it probably causes their hearts to really fill up with gladness and joy. Have an opportunity to bless our mothers. The husbands, we have opportunity to praise our wives. Too often we just expect mothers to somehow get everything done without offering them help. Here's a story that describes that a little bit. I want to read out of this book again. I think maybe I read out of it recently. Another time. Mom versus Dad. Mom said, I'm tired and it's getting late. I think I'll go to bed. She went to the kitchen to make sandwiches for the next day's lunches. Rinsed out the popcorn bowls, took meat out of the freezer for supper the following evening, checked the cereal box levels, filled the sugar container, put the spoons and bowls on the table, and started the coffee pot for brewing the next morning. She then put some wet clothes into the dryer, put a load of clothes into the wash, ironed a shirt, and secured a loose button. She picked up the newspaper strewn on the floor, picked up the game pieces left on the table, and put the telephone book back into the drawer. She watered the plants, emptied a waste basket, and hung up a towel to dry. She yawned and stretched and headed for the bedroom. She stopped by the desk and wrote a note to the teacher, counted out some cash for the field trip, and pulled a textbook out from hiding under a chair. 
She signed a birthday card for a friend, addressed and stamped the envelope, and wrote a quick note for the grocery store. She put both, both near her purse. Mom then creamed her face, put on moisturizer, brushed and flossed her teeth, and trimmed her nails. <laughs> Hubby called. I thought you were going to bed. I'm on my way, she said. She put some water into the dog's dish, put the cat outside, and then made sure the doors were locked. She looked in on each of the children, turned out a bedside lamp, hung up a shirt, threw some dirty socks in the hamper, and had a brief conversation with the one still up doing homework. In her own room, she set the alarm, laid out clothing for the next day, and straightened up the shoe rack. She added three things to her list of things to do for tomorrow. About that time, the hubby announced to no one in particular, I'm going to bed. And he did. <laughs> Does that describe you mothers? Maybe, kind of, sort of. Feels like it never ends. Well, bless you for it, and thank you for it. You do a lot of things, a lot of hard things, a lot of unnoticed things that just wouldn't get done otherwise. Probably never will be seen. But this story gives a little bit of a picture of maybe your feelings. I don't know. But I do hope that we as husbands don't just do that and treat our wives like that. And you know what, children, we can lighten that load as well. You can lighten that load by just doing things for them. And I know of children that do that often, and it is a blessing, a real blessing. When we can encourage our mothers that way, the question is, am I a giver or a taker? As a husband, am I just sitting there, hey, I need a drink, can you bring me a drink? Or... Hey, I'm hungry. Can you bring me some snack or whatever? You know, we walk in, we leave our clothes everywhere expecting our wife to pick it up. You know, we track dirt in the house and don't care. Whatever it is, you know, that's kind of a taker. We're expecting others to follow up behind us. But when we're givers, we're actually looking how we can lighten the load of someone else. So I encourage us to be givers, not takers. Offer what you can to your mother to encourage her to lighten her load. I want to turn to Matthew 25, verses 14 through 46. And I want to give a little challenge, not only to our mothers, but to all of us, really. Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 14 and going through verse 46. And this is really, this is Jesus talking. And in this passage, he's really kind of laying out to each of us what we're doing with the things that he has given us. It's a parable of the talents. Matthew chapter 25. And I want to consider, not only for you, the mothers here, but I want, I want every one of us to consider what God has given us and what we're doing with what God has given us. So uh, I want mothers to um, be challenged in considering all that God has given you as a mother. You know, he's given you a husband who might track in the dirt, (laughs) but he's still been given to you. He's given you children who might be a load, an overload for you. But I want to challenge you as mothers, you know, with what God has given you, what are you doing with it? Not only mothers, but the rest of us as well. Because what God has given us, every one of us, something. Let's read the passage and we'll talk a little bit about this. Starting in verse 14, Matthew chapter 25. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. So remember that, that this is a parable that Jesus is he's telling the story that likens the kingdom of God to this story, so it's in reality, he's, he's letting us know what the kingdom of God is like, but it also really brings it down to earth for us in, re, in, the, in the realities of life. Okay, so let's remember this is a parable, that's, it's a story that's likening it to the kingdom of heaven. So it's as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods, and in this, I keep interrupting here, but you know, Jesus going to his heavenly home and he's given each one of us talents as his servants on earth to what are we going to do with what he's given to us. 
Verse 15, And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, or individual ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents, and now a talent is somewhere around uh, $5,000 approximately. So five talents is approximately $25,000. It's a pretty large sum of money. He that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them, or checked on them. So I really think that that is referring to Jesus, you know, coming back, saying, you know, He's, he's looking at all of us on Judgment Day. How are you doing? He's checking on us. Verse 20, And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said, said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord... Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast sown and gathering where thou hast not strewed or scattered. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, or lazy servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strewed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, or the bankers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury or interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him, from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and, in, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Fathers, mothers, and children, all of us are one of these. The question I ask out of this, what are you doing with the talents, or with what God has given to you? What are you doing with the tangible things like your bodies, houses, cars, money, food, clothes, name it. What are we do? How are we handling these things? What are you doing with the relationships that God has given to you? Are they being productive or have you buried them? Are you ministering to the needs of those around you? You know, in this story, the one with the five talents and two talents, they went out and they 
produced with what their Lord or their, their master had given them. And in the end, the master said, well done, you have used what I gave you in a good way, and enter thou into the, into the joy of thy Lord. But the one that just took the one talent and decided, you know what, I'm afraid to do anything with this thing because, you know what, it may have been for a variety of reasons, because it said, you know, the, you know my Lord, he's going, to, he's going to take whatever is his anyway, so it's not a big deal if I produce with it or not. I don't need to worry about producing or using this for any particular reason. So he just went and just kind of let it sit there. And in fact, this one buried it. But in, in our situation, I'm thinking, okay, so what are we doing with the things we have? You know, whether it's, you know, the day-to-day grind of things, you know, the things like our houses and such like. I'm thinking of you mothers in particular. How are you handling the things God has given you? But not only that, what about the children? How are you handling? What are you doing with the children God gave you? you, Do you see them as valuable? And are you tenderly and, and faithfully raising them up and teaching them and blessing them along life's way, making a difference in their lives? Are you growing the Word of God within them? I don't think that we really can manufacture this. <laughs> it has to come from deep within us out of a deep love for God that just is who we are. Going on into the rest of this, into the latter part of this passage, where he separated the sheep from the goats, and it appears in this story like both thought they had done they had fed the hungry they had clothed the naked they had done all these things they both thought they had done this you know the first set of people well let me back up maybe they didn't think they had done it the first set of people actually asked the question you know when did we do these things so maybe they, it was not at the forefront of their minds what they were actually doing it just was it was who they are. It, it, it came out from them without them even being focused on it, really. Whereas the latter group said, you know, when didn't we do this? You know, when didn't we feed the hungry? When didn't we clothe the naked? And so they thought they were doing that. So what is, what is the difference here? All these things that it lists describe someone who's helping with the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of those around them. You know, if you're visiting someone in prison, you're, you're, you're probably ministering to them. You're hearing their story. You're talking to them. You're ministering to their emotional and spiritual needs. So I ask the question, what is the difference between those who were sent to heaven or sent to hell? And I just jotted this down that I think this is a portion of it, but maybe not all of it, the latter part here. God judges what is in the heart. Those he sent into everlasting fire could possibly have been serving to be seen by others or thought that good works could, would earn them eternity in heaven. That's just something for us to consider. You know, what is, what is the purpose? Why are we doing the things we are doing? Is it because you want to be seen as a good mother? So to be seen as a good mother, you're going to do all these things? Or, you know, what is it? <laughs> Is it to have an image so your image is better? I I don't know. I'm just just throwing some things out there. Consider your motives. Um, Then the latter part, those that God sent to heaven were helping and loving those around them out of love for God. They were not trying to earn something or trying to be seen by others, but were just living out their love for God. So it came out of a heart of love that just was. wasn't to be seen or it wasn't to gain merit or anything like that. One thing I draw from this, for all of us, keep eternity in sight. You know, we aren't just living, living here without reason and purpose. Keep eternity in sight for not just you, but for all of those around you. And one day, 
I trust we can hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that's for all of us. You know, mothers, one day, there will be a reward for all the things you've done and all the unseen things that you've done. There will be a reward for the words that you have spoken. All of the love that you've extended to your children and to your husband. So I want to challenge you to do things with, with what God has given you. Um, use them well. And you will be blessed. And one day, I think God could, will say, I think so. Well done, thou good and faithful mother. Okay. And, you know, those things, those little things don't go unnoticed in the eyes of God. God sees those things. And so if it seems like no one else sees them, God does. I want to encourage you in that way and challenge you. Now, I want to, I remember that I forgot to, after the Proverbs passage to open it up, but I want to hear things from you that your mothers do and that you can bless them for, praise them for. I want to have a little interaction uh, from, e from not each of you, but from some of you. So children and adults, whoever. Let's hear some, some things that your mothers do for you. Open it up. They love me or she loves me. She loves you. They cook for us. Cook for you. <laughs> Just say it out. You don't have to raise your hand. They help with homework. You got it. They entertain us. Entertain you. Hmm. <laughs> Spend time with us. Spend time with you. They discipline us. Ooh, discipline you. They discipline us so that we can do good things. So you can do good things. That's a good point of view. They buy things for us. Buy things for you. My mother prays for me. Do your laundry. Do your laundry. Wow, that's an amazing thing. Wow, you know what? I'm ashamed to say this, but I hardly know how to run a washing machine. <laughs> and when I do, I have to, a few times I do, I have to ask, okay, do I need to reset this thing? How much soap do I put in this thing? Ah, oh, just push the button and put a little bit of soap in. Praise God for a wife and daughter who do my laundry. Anyone else? Could probably go on and on and on, right? They iron and buy clothes for us. Okay. Pick up after us. Yes. They what? Pick up after us. I'm sorry, sir. Pick, pick, pick up after us. They pick up after us. Oh, pick up after us. Okay. <laughs> I, th I was hearing back or something. I went to pack or something. I'm sorry. Pick up after. Okay. And my family is getting more and more, I hope, patient with my loss of hearing. <laughs> Just like, uh, uh oh. See, there goes a mother. Some of you older ones, think about what your mother or your wife. That's for you. Lucas, you have something. Emergencies, you're right. You got it. When there's emergencies, they help you. So you like that kind of personal care that your mother gives you? Helps me school. Yeah. I was thinking about my wife. Well, the little story you read uh, was very indicative of how, you know, I think she might as well just go to bed, but on the way to bed, there's so many things that she takes care of. And uh, I just want to give a public affirmation 
for Sandy for the things that she's done. I was reading through this Proverbs 31. I told her, well, you haven't bought a field yet. <laughs> I said, well, I do buy things on Amazon. <laughs> You know, 15 or 16 years of not having her around on Mother's Day makes me realize it was a good thing to have a, a godly mother then. And I encourage anybody who still has a mother alive, you know, make the most of encouraging them. Mm -hmm. We don't know when to lose it. Yeah. I was thinking a little bit of that in relation to my mother. Last fall, she had COVID and was in the hospital. I, when she went to the hospital, I really didn't know if we would see her alive again. And I was thinking about that, and I'm just really grateful that God saw, still has... Uh, Gabe has given me the opportunity to still love my mother. Yes. Well, one I accidentally, I accidentally swallowed a coin and I had to stay in the operating room. My mom stayed with me all night. Mm. Wow. They'll do that. I've seen that quite a few times. The characteristic of mothers. They're willing to lose a lot of sleep for us, right? Yeah, I wonder how much time our mothers have lost, how much, you know, have lost sleep. You know, they should be sleeping, so they have the energy to do so that all the things that there's to do. Ah, but they, they lose sleep. Pretty large component of being a mom, right? Losing sleep. Do you have something? No? All right, more? I also would like to just publicly bless Heidi for all of the work that she does in our household. I was going to try and keep her out of the kitchen this morning, hmm. but just couldn't do it. It didn't, didn't happen, huh? <laughs> it's like my best you, just, you just don't feel the bill all the way, huh? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 See, there's a connection there between you with something you're interested in, and that's that's uh, a, brings about a deeper. Um, still does anyway. Well, I'll say the same. I guess my mom learned it from her mom. Hmm. Uh, yesterday, my mom was out there staring under the hood of his car, missing bumper and all that stuff, and wondering what I'm doing. I think I told someone this recently, maybe, but <clears throat> um, somewhere we picked up on this term shouldering. You know, like, not necessarily they're doing anything that you're doing, but they're there just being there with you. And Sharon is really good at shouldering. Um, and I love that. When I'm just doing something and she's there, it's not necessarily, she doesn't even have to be talking, she's just there. She's shouldering me, you know? <laughs> and I like that. Thank you. She helps me with when I don't really need help. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay, well, there's many things. What were you going to talk? I'm just really, I was going to say, I'm really grateful I still have my mother. She's like 77 and um, just a real gift to me. She prays a lot hmm. for her children, the six kids and all our children. There's a lot of grandchildren. And... Um, a little like what Sharon said, like she's just very interested in each of her children's lives, but each of her grandchildren's lives. And I can talk to her about the details of anything and she'll listen, whether it's cooking or you know, her love for plants or it's just a deep love for the Lord. And um, she was quite patient. I mean, I look back, I just I remember saying years ago, but <laughs> like for her to teach me to sew, she should have won a medal for mm. like she was a perfectionist i'm not a perfectionist we have completely different personalities but she would be like no sandy go rip it out we got to do it again <laughs> and i was like oh. mm. but like she just she was a good teacher mm. in practical things of life and mm. now as i'm a mother i think i appreciate it a lot more because mm. i realized the sacrifices that she did mm. many many things and she mm. still does every time i see her she just tucks in gifts, you know, whether it's Mrs. Meyer's dish soap the other week, she handed me, you know, like a box of canned chicken. That's just what my mom likes to do for mm. her kids. Mm -hmm. It really was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, um, I just wanted to point out that um, 
you don't choose your parents. God chooses them for you. Um, I can say that um, my mom didn't take care of me, but I love my mother. Um, she's a very sick mother. But I wouldn't, through the suffering, I wouldn't train her for anything. Else. And that in and of itself blesses her, I'm sure, knowing that. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I'll close here, but I wanted to bless you mothers and encourage you mothers and challenge you mothers to consider all that God has given you and what is flowing out from you to those around you. One day, well... You may hear the words, you'll hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, but I, you know, well done, thou good and faithful mothers. So God bless you mothers today, and I trust that as you go on, you can live with joy, hope for tomorrow, and opportunities for tomorrow. Lord bless you.